Please look for Red Tank. Go ahead, she takes him out. What a game. What a game. My God. They're attacking. They're every single vehicle of dislike is falling off. They're assaulting them. Welcome back to Thunder League. Welcome back to Thunder League. We just been through the amazing group stage, and now we got to the meat of the show. This is playoffs. So the first match of the playoffs is about to start, and it's Duradler of Russia versus GOF of Ukraine. I'm Sean Pops Herkeg, is a tillin also known as, as Pops, and here with me is Mike Goes Boom. How are you guys all doing? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Boom, and welcome finally to the playoffs of Thunder League. After what seems like an eternity after the group stages, we are finally, finally getting to say these amazing matches. Now, the first match of today is, as Sean just said, the Adler versus GOF. Whoever wins this game is going to advance one stage and face off against Fink. I think it is tomorrow that this match is. Um, a little announcement here. If one of these teams loses, they are not automatically out just yet. This tournament will have a double elimination, which means each team can afford to lose once before, uh, well, getting kicked out of this tournament. Isn't that right, Sean? Uh, well, it's a double elimination. So, you know, if you lose, you still have one more shot at this. You're going to be playing against another loser. But generally, when you're when you're going in any kind of elimination, especially in playoffs, you don't want to be losing at all. Definitely not. And um, what can I say? This is it. We we finally got to it. This is the proper competition because group stage, you know, for what it's worth, it was fun to watch. It it was exciting. It was tough. But compared to this, that was all a child's play. That was that was just a preparation. Uh, an opening salvo. Now this is proper war. Indeed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, we are having giveaways during these streams as well. So, all you have to do is go to Warfunder Pro, go to the Streams tab, and be logged in with your in-game account. You can win one of the following prizes. We are giving away, for all play for, a for all people watching the stream, even without a dog tag, you can win. Civil Line Boosters, Resist Points, Free Days of Premium Account, 100 Million Eagles, and the entry for Chaffee or the P51A Mustang. Now, we had some changes based on your feedback, which means that uh, the P49E7U2, the Panther T5, and the RBT5 can only be won by people who have the dog tag, as well as a new item, which is Team Logo Decals. So, if you have a favorite team, Maybe you can win their logo as a decal and put it all over your tanks and aircraft. I personally am I'm rooting for an M22 Locust um, army with uh, this, like, uh, decals all over the tank. Just a crab army on the beaches of, of jungle. Yeah, totally. Now we're getting a feed of the, of the map. So we're seeing two vehicles from each team's moving on towards Alpha, which is, which is kind of standard if you, when you play jungle. Uh, getting a bit of lag here, so it's really hard to... Um, to tell because lag's pretty substantial but yeah let, anyway you know what while the lag's starting itself out let me talk about some good stuff now we just recently achieved the fifty thousand dollar stretch goal on the tournament meaning that every owner of the dog tag automatically tomorrow starting tomorrow will be getting a soviet captured panther t5 tank and a German uh, BF-1097 U2 fighter. So, 
at the same time, <laughs> the price of the dock tag got up to $19.99. So if you guys haven't bought it before, well, it's your loss. But still, you know, even if buying it even now, that's quite a bargain because you get two premium vehicles for like $20, which is real cheap. And even more than that, you get um, guaranteed two premium vehicles. Then, if you complete the challenges, you get another M24, which is not a premium, but the P51A Mustang is a premium. And on top of that, you can still win the RBT5 as well. That's f at least four potential premium tanks and one unique vehicle. Yeah, That's exactly. a lot of, of stuff for you to get. Exactly right. Now, um, let me tell you what's going on overall on the map. So, Alpha is tightly secured by GOF. They got two vehicles on it, Dark Doker and a T-25, coming to support Feel So Mad, sitting in a T-44 right on top of the flag. Bravo and Charlie controlled by their respective teams. Uh, not a whole lot going on between uh, Bravo and Charlie, except Yankee's about to face off against Rocket Bunny, if he can spot him in time. In the meantime, Truth Seeker and Eagle are also facing off here now. Eagle has the slight advantage of being in the lower ground, but he's only in a T-34-85. As Truthseeker just puts a shot through his turret, jamming his turret ring and taking out his gunner and his loader. Which means Eagle is going to need some time to repair this, which gives Truthseeker the advantage here of being able to rush around. So far, Dref with a very strong start. They took A, they took C, and they're now advancing towards the B flag. The ally has to come up with a contract offensive or they're going to lose this first match on jungle. Exactly that. Now, um... Dur Adler having a major counteroffensive on Alpha. Three tanks coming up, uh, two T-44s, Trollbins Tra 4 and, and Shark Cross supported by Grimmenheld in Tiger E. We see, actually, Grimmenheld, we see use that Tiger E a lot extensively. Looks like he's kind of an expert on Tiger E for Dur Adler. Although Tiger E on the jungle map might not be the best idea. The thing about the Tiger E is, yes, it has a lot of armor, and yes, the gun is very good, but at the same time, the tank isn't very mobile, and if you get caught uh, with, with your front straight onto an enemy or your side, you are pretty much dead. The Tiger is definitely a long-range vehicle, not exactly the close-range brawling type like the T-44 or the T-34 is. Nah, definitely not. And, and you can tell me something about this, Sean, isn't it? Yeah, that... Being a German tank driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, that thing's pretty tall, you know, it's got a pretty, pretty big profile uh, compared to uh, some other tanks. Well, especially Soviet tanks, which are generally far closer to the ground. And, but, look, as long as you've got range, as long as you angle that armor right, you're pretty much involved, really. Even, even to the side, if you're angled correctly. But, uh, seriously... Playing a tiger on jungle, this is not something I would be doing. Oh, Dark Doker here was in a very strong position in T25, but got taken out. You also imagine now the only player from the earth left alive in the A flag. Trollblends is advancing, but he has his rear pointed towards Rocket Bunny and Siberian Man and True Seeker as well, which means Trollblends can't advance right now. And he gets taken out by True Seeker. Very good shot, very good shot. I wonder if you guys have noticed this major difference from uh, the group stage battles because everybody's super careful right now. <laughs> Nobody wants to lose, and um, it is it is it's almost the six minutes of of the first battle, and only four deaths for GOF and just a single death for the Rattlers. So uh, both teams being very, very cautious not to lose vehicles early on. Okay, so there's... Hey, this is it, Sean. This is it. You cannot really afford to lose here. Okay, given you can afford to lose once. But by losing once, you already diminish your chances to, to even get to the final by a lot. You can only w lose once. The second time you lose, you are out of the playoffs. Which means each of these teams, of course, want to get into the top six because this is the thing. Uh, the higher you are in the playoffs, the more money you win. Yeah. Oh, Tiger just got taken out. Oh, Yankee, good shot, good shot. Now he's gonna move on to Charlie. It looks like GOF got nobody in place to stop him from from seizing Charlie, and it's gonna be a double cap for the Rattler, which they which they need desperately because you know, look, look at the tickets, look at the tickets. They've been they've been trained hard by GOF. I don't think he's going to make it in time. Siberian Man. Yeah, Siberian Man's right there in that panther. 
True Seeker also actually above Siberian Man. And I just don't see that T-44 winning against two tanks at, at range, especially against the Panther. No, it's not going to work out, John. If you look at the team lists, uh, the Adler only has two players left alive on the map right now. Jeff is completely dominating this. Very strong player, I gotta say. They held this from start to finish. This is something we rarely see. You know, we always see some kind of turnaround, some kind of uh, advanced tactics where the team, teams just use a, an opening in the enemy defensive line, but not, a, not this time around. Jeff is constantly holding this, uh, this game against uh, the Adler so far. Yeah, still, I would not call this a massacre because um, overall, teams are kind of equally matched if you take a look at the points. Now, in the group stage, uh, you know, every single team had nine battles. And Duradler uh, had three wins and six losses. Now, GOF standing just a tad bit above him with four wins and five losses. So, 12 points versus nine. Uh, you know, this could still go, go either way, seriously. But uh, definitely... Jungle is not the Rattler's favorite map, which is pretty evident from the way they played it in uh, the group stage and now even more clearly so. And uh, still could go either way, but I'm kind of guessing GOF might have the upper hand tonight. What do you think? I'm guessing so. Here's the thing. GOF is the stronger team. Just that's just a fact. The Adler barely managed into the into the playoffs. They barely managed to to win to get enough points in the group stages to secure the positions in these playoffs. But still, the Adler is also a good team because here's the thing. Fun fact: yeah. the Adler was the only team who actually only. managed to win yeah. against this like. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Nobody else, not Verve, not Arcade, nobody could manage to beat the Crazy Crab. <laughs> it was only the Adler. Somehow they did it. Somehow they did it. Um, and they're going to need that play, that level of performance that they pulled off against this, like if they want to be uh, winning uh, against GOF right now. But can they do it? That's the question. Can they do it? That's the question. The next battle is going to be on Eastern Europe, which means classical, classical tactics. Rush C, secure the side of the river, and you win the match. Now, whilst we wait for these teams to ready up, let me announce some stuff. Now, of course, if you have paid any attention to what's been happening over the last couple of weeks, you certainly heard about the uh, dog tags and all the prizes you can win. Now, I'm not going to repeat all the prizes you can win because everyone who has a dog tag should know by now. Tomorrow, you're going to get the Panther T5 and the B49E7, two premium vehicles. But since we reached the $50,000 uh, milestone today, the prices of dog tags have increased. They are now $19.99, which means you can still buy them until I think it's 7 a.m. after the day of the finals. So until then, you, you still have time to buy yourself a dog tag, even, even when technically the Thunder League is over. So that's your last chance to get yourself all the prizes you can get with the with the dog tag. Um, the skin tasks that you unlock with buying the dog tag, you can complete them until the 15th of February. So you have roughly three weeks left to get those uh, those tests done to get yourself of course the skins for the uh, for the league pro teams and uh, the P51A Mustang and the M24 Chaffee. And if you maybe did a wrong choice in betting on the wrong team, because you could bet, bet on teams to get yourself even more prizes. <laughs> yeah, we talked about this. We talked about this. You went like, hey, hey, I got myself a great two, two golden tag with my own money. And I'm like, why? Why would you want that? And he's like, well, you know, if if Dislike's going to lose, uh, I'm going to switch. So Mike got no loyalty. My God. Hey, you what a turn, like I, I just what want RBT5. <laughs> you, you can see me right now. Between my hands, eating his scale, uh, RBT5, loyalty. RBT5, yeah, the RBT5 is heavier. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely so. But still, I mean, I, I, I feel good for people who bought the original dog tag uh, way back in the group stage. Because now, I mean, just just by paying like $9, they're going to get two premium vehicles guaranteed. And pretty good ones at that, you know. So we catch the Panzer T5 and, and a BF 109E7U2, which are both, you know, very good vehicles. Now, okay, let's take a look at the map. So remember what we told you about Eastern Europe. If you haven't... If you haven't seen it played in esports before, it's pretty basic how you win here. You gotta have somebody across the river um, for two reasons. First of all, to prevent the enemy from putting pressure on tier forces uh, around Charlie, and ultimately being able to put pressure there yourself against the enemy. And you know you gotta have a strong presence on Charlie. So t take a look at uh, feel so mad in the middle here already sitting 
but he's countered by Overlord, so no capture there. It's contested. Now, in the air, uh, so far, only three aircraft. Uh, well, at least only three left. Prince of Amast and the G G6. Surprisingly, no rockets, but gun pods. That is indeed surprising. Um, these teams like to use the BFM 96 for one single reason, those rockets. Here's the thing, the current mechanics don't allow for bombs to explode right on contact on the ground, they have a delay when you drop them, which means, especially the LA-7 with those 100 kilogram bombs is kind of useless against tanks. The BFM 96 with rockets though, that can very pinpoint accurately and instantly take out any tank uh, in this in these playoffs but Tetanal Gunpots is indeed a very strange tactic one because it uh, makes your flight characteristics of your aircraft worse it makes you turn worse it makes you climb worse it makes you have a lower top speed and second they are kind of useless against tanks as well so I don't know Ma they might be going for a superiority here now look on, on the other side of the map um, what do we have Dark Doker about to face off against Eagle. This could be very decisive because. Uh, oh, Eagle! Good shot against Dark Dorker. Dark Dorker's no more. Now they needed that. They needed that. Yeah, Eagle's in prime position now because uh, Durrettler's being pushed back on Charlie, but th now they can turn this around. If Eagle can capitalize on the success that he just had against Dark Dorker. Although, GF is in the better side of the map here, if you can see now, um, Phil Somat is in, the caps, in the, is in the cap circle holding it strong and Rocket Bunny is supporting him. These two tanks, we've seen this before, two tanks on the side of the map can completely hold off the entire enemy team. Even with uh, Eagle on the other side of the river, since Phil Somat is facing his front against Eagle, he yeah. is still pretty much, pretty much safe. Un unless Eagle can get a lucky shot straight through the front of his turret, is not going to, to do any damage then. Yeah, that, that will be extremely hard, you know, like T-44, you know, very famous for his superior frontal armor. Side armor, rear armor, negligible. It doesn't matter. As, you know, you gotta have that tank facing towards the enemy. As long as you do, you're totally safe, really. I mean, Tiger, ta Tiger's struggling to kill it. It's a, it's a sloping, sloping armor, it's very, very trollish. Yeah. You, you bounce shots that, that you don't expect to, but the Adler has to advance. The Adler has to advance here. They cannot afford exactly, to exactly. wait again. And this is, looks like they're, they're, they're about to uh, do just that. Overlord inching his way closer, and Yankee's providing fire support to keep Rocket Bunny hidden there behind the ruin. Now, what they got to do is they got to wait for Eagle to take out Feel So Mad. And, you know, they're going to be, uh, they're going to have the advantage in terms of, uh, well, they, they, they will be able to just move Yankee for, to, to behind this building and start capturing. Or at least decapping is is good for now, you know, at this point, because they're they're bleeding points. What they really should get is a BF-109 right now. If they can get a BF-109 G6 with rockets in the air, they can take out Feel So Mad very easily, which is going to allow Yankee to rush straight into the cap zone and decap it. Because at the moment, they are kind of in a stalemate. The longer they wait here, the easier it's going to be for GF to hold this, uh, this flank. Because look at this now. Um, the Adler had the adventure of having the other side of the river all for themselves for the past couple of minutes, and now GF has uh, sent Dark Doper back over here, which means Eagle is distracted and cannot support this team anymore. Okay, guys, the giveaway is a go. Now, keep your eyes peeled at the bottom of the screen. You see there's there's the new sticker rolling, and your name could be among one of the winners. Now, if you have a dog tag, you're going to have a 50% increased chance of success in getting uh, one of the uh, premium vehicles that we give out, in addition to uh, Golden Eagles, uh, premium account, and whatnot. And not only that, you also get uh, access to exclusive vehicles because we have updated the terms and conditions of uh, the giveaway. So the vehicles RBT5, B49E7, and Panther T5 can only be won by people with dog tags now. People without yeah. dog tags can still win all the rest of the prizes, including the M24 Chevy and the P51A Mustang. Yeah, that's very true. But then again, you don't really need to win Panther T5 and the uh, 109E7U2 because true. You're already get, once, already once, them. Yeah, once you buy the dog tag, and uh, tomorrow aren't automatically every owner of the, ta of the tag, they're, they're going to get both of these premium vehicles absolutely for free and guaranteed. Now, or let's say, let's say today you get an early access on those vehicles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, now check this out. Dark Doker on the other side of the map already. Uh, trying to oppose uh, Eagle, so Eagle no longer 
able to provide support for uh, Duradler, which is playing right into the hands of GOF because they're they're making Duradler bleed points and they're bleeding them fast. Two versus one, not a very good position uh, to be in. That's what I'm telling you about stalemates. Now, they are the handy right idea. As I said before, they need a for 96 to take out Field Cement so that Yankee can advance into the cap zone. But it might be a little bit too late because now James Cook has spawned in an Ostwind, which means great defense against a for 96 Now, Principal ESD is not a bad pilot. He knows to not get close off that, off that Ostwind. But at the same time, it's going to be hard for him to, to get a proper attack run in on Field Cement. And the longer Field Cement stays alive, the harder it's going to be for the other trenders around because it's just a stalemate. Neither of the teams have moved for the past couple of minutes. Oh, Principum Ast goes down in flames, shot down by James Cook. So, yeah, what did you say about not getting too close? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out in the slightest. So, James Cook definitely uh, that's definitely. bad. Though, that's bad. Dalek cannot afford that. Dalek cannot afford that. Almost all of the players have had one death so far, which means. Whoever gets taken out in the Adler next is out of this game. And we've talked about this before. The domino effect. The famous MGB domino effect. <laughs> MGB the more tanks you lose, effect. the more tanks you're going to lose. The less tracks you have to on the ground. I was going to say boot. This doesn't really apply here. The less tracks you have to on the ground, the less support you have, the less lines you can cover. And the easier it is going to be for the enemy to just take you out one by one. Yeah, sadly, I just don't see how Duradler are going to win this one. Even though I like this team, they're like my second favorite after uh, Dislike, but yeah, the position they're in right now, either they changed their tactics dramatically, which is, I'm not sure possible at this point, or they're going to lose. <laughs> so, yeah, they will most likely lose this one. And Dark Doker, look, across the river, in prime position to um, exploit the flanks of Duradler. So now Duradler, knowing this, you see the kind of they shift the mass towards the woods. So they're trying to uh, kind of like outflank the GOF. But the thing is, GOF got fewer tanks there on Charlie. They have fewer tanks, but they are in the best position. We've seen this before. Two tanks on the side of the river can on this side of the map can hold off the entire team and they have three tanks here so it's going to be no problem for them to hold this off. Honestly the only chance that the other has now because they are losing tanks and they are not, never never going to get C. The only chance they would have right now is to flank all the way around and get A but Severian Man is holding off there in a Panther Rep which is an excellent long range sniping tank so not even that, GF is thinking about every single uh, opportunity here. They are denying every single opportunity to, to the Adler and it's not looking good for them. It is not looking good for the ally here. Definitely not. And, you know, a very important fact to know is that GOF, one of the best players of Eastern Europe, actually, you know, throughout the entire Thunder League, they know this map inside out. They know exactly what to do at every point of the battle. They know at every nook and cranny. So it's a very, you know, very steep battle for the Rattler. Uh, even though they're slightly below GOF in terms of sheer points, now he has 12 versus 9 in the group stage. So, and they're just falling apart, look at this. They only got three tanks left in around Charlie against three of GOF in spear position and about to get reinforced by Rocket Bunny in the T3045. They don't even need to have anybody across the river and the Rattler simply don't have anybody standing across the river. They're down to their last tanks, that's the thing. They cannot afford to lose any more tanks, and GF can just afford to wait here. That's the thing, they don't need to advance. The thing about tanks RB is, the first one to advance is usually the first one to get shot at. And since GF can just afford to stay in the same position and wait for the Adler to, for the Adler to come out, they can just wait and snap them off one by one. As we are seeing, Eagle is out now, which means the Adler is already down three players. They only have four players left. GF is almost in a full team, they have only lost one player so far. And never mind. As you know, they still have lost only one player. Troop Seeker still has a respawn level. So yeah, I, I, it's all about either the other losing through points or losing through elimination. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how it is. They're not going to win this one anymore. Probably, yeah. Prince of the Mast, look, standing defiant, the last active player of Duradler in the Tiger E. Oh man, I, I love this tank a lot, but I just don't see how you can win at this point. It's not a rolling tank, that's the thing about Tiger E, it is not a rolling tank. 
No, Turn definitely not. Kind of... It's kind of bad. So, um, good, you get a good armor, but you have to angle it very well and go and it. And when, you're, when you get attacked from multiple angles, it is very hard to angle the armor properly. Now he's trying to get in the camps up, which is the thing. Even so, they can send all the tanks they want into here. As long as Finsomad stays alive in this camp zone, they cannot cap it. They have to kill Finsomad. Oh man, this is this is a make or break moment. And oh, Prince Bamezgian is taken out by Sakatis from, from across the street. Now Yankee's the last, uh, he's the last, uh, oh, yeah. Scratch that, Scratch Yankee that. got taken out. Oh, Goodman is now the only player left alive and he's miles away from any objective. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. 2-0 for GOF. Ooh, ay ay ay. And this is probably going to rehab on their psyche, you know, their collective psyche of the team. Uh, they lost two battles in a match. And one more, and that's it. They, they've they lost their first elimination now. Again, Sean, let n let's not be too critical just yet. We've seen crazy comic before. If you remember a certain crazy crab team. <laughs> Those, well. guys are, those guys have shown us that comeback. I'm not saying that the Adler are dislike. They aren't. But they can still turn us around. So we'll have to see. We'll just have to see. I not hope they will. I hope they will. You know, <laughs> if if there's time to pull your stuff together, now is the time to rattler, guys. Now is the time. Okay. So uh, we have just recently achieved the $50,000 stretch goal on the dog tags, meaning that every owner of the dog tag uh, tomorrow automatically will be getting two premium vehicles absolutely for free. And that's the Soviet Capture Panther T5 and a BF-109 E7U2. So, and that's, uh, you know, very good vehicles, both of them, also premium. Uh, but at the same time, the price the tag got up to 19.99 so still you know uh if if you're looking to get these two vehicles now is the time to get the tag oh by the way i have some information now we've seen uh one or two e100 germans so far currently there are 300 e100s in the game now there's still going to be new tournaments and we've taken your feedback into account there are going to be some changes to the e100 tournament namely there are going to be no more squads in the 100 tournament so no more squad gameplay it's all completely random the teams are all completely random also um in february we're going to host a exclusive arcade ps4 event so for only for the ps4 players to get their, their hands on the e100 and there's not. There's going to be no more Calliope. The Calliope has been taken out from the roster of the American team. Oh, I love it. It has to be. It has to be. It was I a bit too strong. Yeah, it was a bit too yeah, strong. Yeah, yeah. But I love it. It's great. And maybe, just maybe, the remaining tournaments are going to be held in the all-new team deathmatch mode, which means it's you don't have to rely on your team anymore. It's just you, you versus everyone else. So hopefully that's a bit fairer for everyone who wants an E100. It's not going to take as much time because we've, we've, had, we've had some complaints about that and we are trying to address those complaints and change the tournament to give everyone a, a proper chance. Now, of course, it is still limited. Uh, the limit is still only 700 E100, so you still have to work if you want to get your E100. But at least it's fair this way. You don't uh, depend so much on having a good team or depending on R and Jesus. It's well, that's on skill. That's the only logical thing to do, really, because if you take away the uh, the, the squad capability, you know, you gotta you gotta give something in return. And now, free for all, is is totally logical to do. Now, okay, guys, another giveaway is a go. Another giveaway is a go. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for the bottom of the screen to find out if you want anything. Now, welcome to Kuban. Welcome to Kuban. This uh, could as well be the last battle of this match and this could be the first elimination in playoffs well not final not final mind you so even if Durantler lose this one they will still have another shot at this but they're hard they're going to be hard pressed to win this one because uh you know losing two two battles in a row that takes toll on your psyche i mean a heavy toll at that now looking at the map what what can we see? A very strong force Ooh. of GOF, four tanks moving on to Charlie, and uh, two tanks peeling off, looks like it, to move on to Alpha. About to get opposed by three tanks from Duradler. Now, what's going on in the skies, Mike? Oh, 
Siberman just kamikazed into Overlord, taking out his tracks and yes, his tracks and his, his gun bar, which means Overlord is disabled but not down. And what the was the point of that? I mean, did he have uh, rockets there? He had, he had, but here's the thing, since the rockets are mounted underneath the wings, he had the wrong angle and the rocket just went to either side of the tank without hitting the tank directly. Oh, okay, that- It happens, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, that was a failure right there. Durattler, capping Alpha. Uh, GOF, capping Charlie, and Durattler already got Bravo. So Eagle, he's the lone, uh, lone player there on Bravo. Now he's gonna move in to link up with his forces in the middle on Alpha. So I'm gonna give it to the Ale here. They are definitely still trying. They're not giving up. They went to sort of with the early, early cap here. And if they can hold A, they can actually win this because UF went with the C cap. They sent most of the bosses over to the C flag, probably hoping that they could get the A flag as well. But at the moment, it's going to be very hard for them to take, it, to take the A flag as well. They're going to have to get some flanking action going on here. Now, GOF lost only one vehicle so far, and that was Rocket Bunny. That's it. So, only, no, wait, 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 scratch that, I'm sorry, that was Siberian Man, and now James Cook, so two, two deaths versus three for Duradler. So, is this, is this a trend? <laughs> is this it's still, it's still pretty even up. It, uh, yeah, it's still pretty even, but is this indicative of what's coming up next? I hope not, I hope not. I want to see more of this, because this is the playoffs, I mean, seriously, I'm hyped. I want to see more. I don't want the battles to end three to zero. This is not what I'm here for. Now, the situation on the ground is still the same. The other holding two flags, having the bleed going on. Eagle, who kept the B flag, is now going around to support his teammates via flanking. Here's the thing about tanks. If you can get flanking going on, it's very, very, very good for, beneficial for you. Simply for the physics here, tanks can only face one way at a time. And generally, the, the heaviest armor of a tank is on the front. T44, Tigre, Panther, they're all very strong from the front, not so much from the side. So, no. Which means if you can get the tank from the side and get two lines of fire going on into a single tank, you're very likely going to take it out. And this is exactly what the GF is trying to do here as well. They went with a heavy, face, heavy uh, force over on C-Flag, trying to get some flank and fire going on, but it was just a little bit too late because they either rushed straight into the a cap. Yeah, and so far, Duradler seem to be content staying at the low ground, you know, not to get uh, overly suppressed from uh, Charlie. Here's the thing, the Adler went in... Actually, they have a lot of Tigerese and long-range positions. That's actually a very, very good tactic, but the frontline tanks are all... Criminal so has crashed! What the hell happened? Criminal, what? Ooh, I think that's actually his second. Oh, no, 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 that's, yeah, that's, 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 sorry, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of lag here, my bad. Ah, uh, it's not fine. Yeah, Anyways, no, never uh... mind, scratch that. <laughs> so, Grimmenhell crushed a while back. Now, um, Truth yeah, Seeker ju just guess. got, just got taken out by Shark Russ. Ooh, Tobin's took it, and he's Ooh, down, that totally oh. takes him down. Ay, 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 Siberian man, after crushing his aircraft, you know, it looks like that, uh, Panther Ramp, uh, turning out a bit better <laughs> than a 109 for Siberian man. So now Jeff is advancing on the A cap. Shark Russ is the only one in the A cap. Well, he has support from Overlord, but as long as he stays alive in here, Jeff cannot take this flag. At the same time, though, Shark Russ isn't a uh, Soviet tank, which means bad, bad, bad gun depression. He cannot really crest that hill without getting shot, especially since the T-34 has not very good turret armor. If you catch the, the turret front flat on, you're guaranteed to penetrate that thing. So. If it wasn't an American tank, something like a um, M4A3 Jumbo, that'd be a perfect tank in this position, but uh, these teams generally like to take out Soviet tanks, even though this is a very hilly map. I don't know what they know, but they seem to know better than me, and it works out for them, so I'm, I'm just going to shut up now. Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, GOF got two vehicles, T-34, 85, and the 44, so that's True Seeker and Staccati's, uh, mounting an offensive on Bravo. But they have to uh, tackle two tigers. That's uh, Grim and Hill and Prince of Amast. You know, both of these guys really into German vehicles because we constantly see them take uh, 109s and tigers. And that's uh, that's going to be difficult to do because uh, now tigers in defensive position, they're perfect, really. I mean, if you want to defend something, this is what you want to be having. But at the same time, look. Grimmenhelm is the only one left. Principal Mast was taken out by True Seeker just now. 
So not looking good for Bravo, but Bueller, Bueller's coming in to reinforce in another Tiger. My God, it's <laughs> this is crazy. Green but... health has these slight advantages here, though. He isn't in Tiger E. As long as he doesn't crest that hill and exposes uh, lower glaciers, he should be fine against the T-34. D-34 is going to have a very hard time to penetrate his third frontal arm, especially since that thing is layered. It's going to most likely bounce. Oh, oh, Sean, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the first flying grocery store of the playoffs. Welcome to the field, James Cook and the SM79B. Yeah, but the problem is, <clears throat> is that if Dur Adler uh, can't hold Bravo, which, yeah, that's it. Look, Sakati's about to take take Bravo. Not looking good. They're bleeding, but they're they're, they're bleeding GOF pretty bad. But that bleed's gonna stop. That bleed's gonna stop. And Gr and if Grimmenhell dies, if Grimmenhell dies, GOF will be in a prime position to encircle the remainder of forces on Alpha, tighten the news, and you know go for triple cap essentially. At the same time, though, the GOF might actually lose the C flag as well. Okay, given Sicardus is going to take this B flag, no problem. Grimmenhell is way too far away to do anything about that. But at the same time. Look at the positions here. If Eagle somehow manages to take out Dark Dogger and Fuel Mad and Rocket Bunny, of course, they can actually completely reverse the situation and go for the C cap. And now C and A are much easier to defend from one another than B. B is kind of in the middle of nowhere there. I and really don't get what, what Eagle's going for. He's like one against three, and he's surrounded from all sides. And what? There, you see what I was talking about? He's yeah, dead now. Back up turret. Yeah, that didn't work out well. But looks like he was just. Uh, content with uh, buying time, you know, stalling the enemy. Man, they are some aircraft here. They are losing some aircraft, that's a problem. They haven't really shown much uh, much aircraft play so far, and they are slowly running out of tanks here. Currently, the Adler is down three players, whilst the US is down only two. Now, the Adler still has more respawns left, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they have two players that haven't died yet. At the same time, they can't really afford to lose the players that, uh, that have died once, which means Grimmenheld and Eagle Cannot afford to die once more, they're out of this game as well. Yeah. Oh, oh, they are, oh, Grimmel took out back to the flag. Look at the cap. Oh yes. man, that's it, that's it. The bleed is on, and looks like they have turned us around. Good job, Duradler. Yeah, that's it, man. GOF, they're gonna run out. They're gonna run out right now. Shock Ross in the so middle has to stay. Has to stay oh, there, oh, has oh, to oh, stay. Oh, you yeah. gotta stay. Oh, that's it. He decapped it in just the nick of time. Man, oh, too late. Oh, it's too late. late. It's, yeah, zero points. Nice. One to two. Yeah, that takes a win. Good job, Duradler. Good job. Oh, man, I, I was worried there for a second, to be honest. I was. GF has always uh, displayed that he can turn games around as well, and it definitely looked like they were turning this around, but the Adler paid attention. The Adler was actually one of the very few teams that pay attention when the, team, when the enemy is turning it around. And that was a very, very fair win. Very well played from start to finish. They uh, rushed into the flags. They held their flags. They counter uh, counterattacked their flags, and they won fair and square. Good win by the outlier. Yeah, definitely so. But they can't afford to lose any more battles in this match because they're they're on a precipice uh, to uh, elimination. Well, at least the first elimination. They will still have another one going. Uh my god this this they got to win <laughs> they got to win they kind of win twice in a row now and all GOF has to do is just win once and that's it Indeed. now ladies and gentlemen if you're thinking yourself that hmm I'm a better player than these guys if I get enough guys I can make my own team and compete in this in this final league well I have an announcement for you you can uh, a couple of days ago, Gaijin announced the Thunder League Junior Division. Yep. Which means each team will have um, will be able to pl to join qualifying matches for squadron battles. The best teams will take part in the semi division qualifying and main stages. So it's going to, it's going to be a tournament like this, but in a semi league. And the winners of that semi league will play in the playoffs, and the winners of that playoff are going to go into the first division of Thunder League. So maybe in the next season we are going to see you. Yes, you, sitting at home uh, in your underwear and eating popcorn or chips or whatever. You <laughs> might be playing in front of the league. You might be, yeah. And um, maybe you're going to get our amazing vo voiceovers, <laughs> commentary slash... Oh, God, uh, so now, now, now no one's going to, to apply. <laughs> yeah, now nobody's, nobody's going to want to do this. Yep. 
<sighs> think about the money, though. Think about the money. At the moment, if I'm not mistaken, the first place of whoever wins this playoffs is currently winning, uh, I think, eighteen thousand dollars. Divide amongst the whole team. That's at least one thousand dollars for each player. So. If you are one of those people that um, that lives in a cave with your mother always saying, get off the damn computer, you're never going to win money like this. Well, now you can. <laughs> now you can, but still, that's going to be a tough battle. Don't want to, you know, don't want to uh, confuse anyone. Don't want to lie here because it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a very, very hard battle because you got to be able to tackle the likes of Verve, Arcade, Dislike, and such. But you got to start someday. You know, they, they started once, and now they're here in the Thunder League, you know, uh, going from the big It's bucks. all about practice. You might not win. Of course, you might not win the first time around, but if you keep it at, if you get a good team, you might be one of the next great, uh, great names in Thunder League. Yeah, and, uh, let's, be, let's, let's be realistic. You will not going to win the first time around. Probably not, no. You, you need experience because no matter how talented you are, no matter how um, much training you put into it, you just need this specific tournament experience. And that only comes, you know, with playing tournaments. So, but you got to start someday. And uh, we need more teams. You know, we want this to, to grow into a bigger sport. And definitely need more people for this. So why don't you try and apply for the Junior League, guys? This might work out for you. I especially challenge those people that are always saying that they can play better than the than the players in the eSports teams. I, I've seen a lot of uh, of people just wondering, ooh, I'm better than these guys. Well, come on, prove it then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Thunder League Playoffs, if you just tuned in. This is the Adler versus GF. GF is currently leading 2-1, which means they only have to win one more game to advance to the next stage of the playoffs and play against Fink tomorrow. Now, if you don't know yet, and if you don't, what have you been doing for the past month? Like, we've, we've had two weeks of playoffs already. More Where have you two been? weeks, actually Not 16 weeks. days, man, 16 days. This is going on for a while, but hey, if you, didn't, if you didn't know yet, you can actually win prizes by watching these streams. All you have to do is go to warfunder.pro, go to the streams tab, and be logged in with your in-game account. Now, you can, of course, just pause the stream and go back to Twitch or open a Twitch chat in the pop-up and drag it over to the um, warfunder.pro uh, streams page. Whatever fancies your, whatever floats your boat. But, whatever floats your boat. English is hard. But you can win one of the following <laughs> prizes. I love you, if Mike. If you don't have a dog tag, you can win silver line boosters, research points, free Desert Supreme account, 100 golden eagles, the M24 Chaffee, or the p one a Mustang. Now, if you have a dog tag, you can win all of the above. And, well, you're already getting the p 97 and the Panther T5 tomorrow. So let's say you gain early access to those two vehicles. But you can also win the RBT5 rocket tank and some decals of your uh, favorite teams. Yes, the logos that you see right now, maybe you can get a red tiger from GF, you can get a Der Adler symbol on your tank, on your aircraft, whatever you fancy. Now, personally, I would like the, um, the dislike logo just so I can put it all over my tanks and have like a Zerg rush of crazy crabs, uh, just rushing a mouse, something like that. I don't know. Whatever, whatever you, you can imagine, you can do it now. Yeah, to, to, totally so. Now... We're waiting uh, for the teams to decide what's the what the next map is going to be. Looks like it's going to be Normandy. Looks like it's going to be Normandy. Now, we've seen uh, Dur Adler play Normandy. It, usually, it didn't turn out well for them, sadly. So. Normandy is an interesting map, I gotta say. There's a um, great, great mix between. Uh, open lines of sight on the beach, you have city combat in the city itself, and you have some kind of, uh, well, hilly, foresty combat on the southern side where the hills are and where the sea flag is. So there's a different kind of tactics that you that you get there. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, yeah, it's 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 like, it's not an urban map. It's not a wilderness map. It's, it's not of them. It's all of these maps combined, really. So, and you need a lot of coordination. Actually, aircraft plays a major role in Normandy because uh, smoking out those tanks from from the town is next to impossible without either a very good coordination between your players or without, you know, a grocery store flying in and bombing the crap out of them. So, okay. Uh, looking at the map, what are, we, uh, what are we having so far? It looks like the main forces of GOF 
rushing towards Alpha. One of them peeling off for Bravo. That's a pretty standard uh, distribution of forces here. Uh, on the other side, now a strong force of Duradler going along the um, the beach, along the beach, but stay, staying in the town and uh, moving towards Alpha. Oh, Sean, sorry to interrupt you here, but um, it's been almost a month since Christmas, but Zerba Claus is coming to town. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have another giveaway. If you see your name on the bottom of the screen, you just want something. So all you have to do is uh, just wait a couple of minutes and log back into the game, and hopefully you can win some amazing prizes. Go on, Tom. Absolutely. Okay, so the battle's about to commence in the town full force. Uh, three tanks, four tanks of GOF. Uh, Dan, they're about to encircle Duradler. Yep. The GOF is going with a very strong tactic here. They are kind of ignoring the B flag, kind of ignoring the, the, the beach. They're going straight for the city domination. That can work out, but at the same time, leaving the open is uh, risky. We've seen this before. The team that spawns on the eastern side has a easier time of capping the B flag than the other team has as of copying the C flag, which is on the other side of the map. So check this out. Before. Check this out. GOF got two lost wins. So I just don't see the aircraft of Duradler doing anything of value against two Ostwins in the town. Seriously, they need to take care of them first. And oh, James Cook just got hit. Just got hit from halfway across the map. Like he got hit from all the way from Charlie. That T-44 nicked him bad. And now he's down to, uh, what is it, to uh, three? Three crewmen? Yeah, all badly hurt. Aye, aye. No, comrade. T-44 is a great Soviet sniper. <laughs> I say, T-44 is not exactly the best long-range sniping tank, but if you if you get the side of a tank, it's still more more than capable. Yeah, it's very true. But looks like, you know, the uh, relatively thin armor of the Ostwind, because <coughs> that's basically a Panzer IV with a very, very lightly armored turret. It looks like that this is what saved him, because the, the, the shot just went through without exploding inside. That's the thing, if you don't have uh, much armor, it can actually work for you. APHP shells work on a fuse, which means they have to pass for a, for a minimum amount of armor for them to be activated, which means that if you shoot something like an APHP shell at a RPT-5, for example, chances are it's just going to go straight through and act like an APCR shell. Man, I'm amazed. Principal Mast still alive in that G6. He's been flying around the town for like two straight minutes facing off against two Austin still alive, and he's actually still got his rockets in those pods below the wings. So he's just buying his time, and he's actually could be, uh, you know, an ace in a hole for Duradler. So far, Duradler suffered pretty substantial losses. That's five deaths they suffered in town. So basically, GOF beat off the advance of uh, Duradler, but that was like, that was a tactical mistake on Duradler's part because. Um, oh, Prince of Amast! Prince of Amast uh, goes down in place and takes, takes Rocket Bunny with him. Was that a smart thing to do? Not for me to decide, but uh, given given the rate of, you know, losing vehicles for Duradler, is this what you want to be doing with him? You have to keep in mind, though, the Atlas on the side of the map that uh, has only carriers for you to land on, and we all know how hard it is to, to, to land something like a V49 on a carrier. I've seen before that one of the players of one of these teams has actually lent a flying grocery store in a carrier, and I have no was, idea how the hell he managed to do that. That was amazing. That was uh, that was flying through the cube of the U.S. Sadly, that didn't make it to uh, the playoffs, but yeah, he actually landed the uh, SM79B on that uh, carrier. That was that was amazing to watch. Absolutely, didn't help them to win though, but yeah, that was that was good nonetheless. Now, GOF, you know, really good positions to just sit and wait, <laughs> really. And uh, look, look at this choke point in the town that uh, GOF got covered. Grimmen held Overlord and Troll Ben's Fur. Look at this tank line. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're in line waiting to get to town and uh, getting pummeled by artillery all the while. My god. And at the same time, the other is trying to mount a counter-offensive here, but they might not have enough players left. 200 players are already out. And interesting fact here, GF has only lost one player, 
but no death otherwise. Rocket Bunny is out, but none of the players that are currently on the map have died even once. Which means, oh, this is looking bad. GI has the point advantage, they have the cap advantage, and they have the numbers, the numbers advantage. They are like kind of bit themselves in the rear here by not uh, not capping that A flag and letting GI have taken these, uh, these defensive uh, positions here, which means they can't really advance without losing tanks, and they can't afford to lose tanks either. So they are either going to have to pray for a miracle, get an SM79 BR or something like that, or they are going to have a very hard time of winning this match. And remember, Jeff only has to win one, uh, one last time. If they win this match, the Adla has one loss under the belt and is going to have a much, much harder time to, to even get to the finals here. Yeah, do you remember what I mentioned uh, before the match started? The way Duradler handle uh, Normandy? It's the, <clears throat> for some odd reason, they get tunnel vision every time they play Normandy, is that they, they can't really spread out here. You know, they gotta stay together like they're getting cold or some stuff. I don't know, it's weird, but this is actually what I kinda expected. And it oh, happens exactly the way I, I, I anticipated, sadly. GRF now hit the maneuver invented by the crabs. Troop Seekers is running around, flanking the rest of the team of the other. They're completely, completely clustered here. That's the thing. You have to learn to, to disperse your tanks. Sure, it's, it's good to have your tank, uh, your tanks all together to support each other, but at the same time, if you have your entire team compressed to a single point in the map, it's very easy for the enemy team to just flank around you and take you out one by one. And this is exactly what's happening right now. Troop Seeker flanked all the way around, is taking shots at Troll Bands, Troll Bands is taking shots from behind as well, from the Oswind. This is not looking good. No, definitely not, definitely not. Not only they, they're down to just three active vehicles, uh, Durathlon, they're, tactically, they're in a really bad spot. They're basically surrounded right now. Oh, two active vehicles, Scratch Dad, Rivenhill, and Tigri, and Shark Cross, and T-44. The only two guys alive for Overlord. Not as well, but he's just about to be killed as well by the Oswin. Overlord, yeah. <laughs> yeah, scratch that. Overlord's dead. You see what I told you, man? Just to take his mouth. Driven health going with the aggressive uh, defense against the troops here, but at the same time he's exposing his rear to the Oswin, and even the Oswin can't penetrate the rear of the Tiger. Oh, and now he's... Oh, nice! He's taking him out the but he's still getting pumped from the Oswin from behind. Ah, uh, not looking good for, for the Ali here, I gotta say. This is not looking good for them. You don't say, Mike. You don't <laughs> say. I mean, seriously, now the 2v2 tanks, Grim and Hell. Observations with Michael's group. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Captain Obvious, um, right there, Grim and Held. My god, my god. I mean, at this point, you know, if I was Duradler, I'd be I'd be holding J down. <laughs> Just J. Oh. Seriously, well, this is this is this is futile. This is totally futile, man. Oh, man. Not looking good. Not looking good for uh, uh Dur uh, Duradler. Okay, Grimmin Hill's dead. Now Overlord's the last Overlord's defined... last player alive. Oh. Now can he stay alive until the game ends, or is he going to get sh Ooh, Ooh, takes out the Oswin, yep. takes a shot in the side from Dark Doker, though. He's now immobilized. That's his transmission down. He's side on to Dark Doker. Still, he can point his gun, but at the same time, he is um, rearwards out, which means that Dark Doker can actually shoot at him without getting shot back, because there's, well, there's a house in the way. So, it's just a matter of time before Fitzmaid advances as well and takes him out. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've just tuned in, welcome to the Fun League Playoffs. This is the first match between the Adler and Juf. At the moment, Juf is leading 2-1, but it seems like they are going to take this final match and win 3-1 against the Adler, which means the Adler is going to descend into the loser's bracket, and Juf is going to face off against Fink tomorrow. Yeah, this... Uh, well, you know, if... <clears throat> If battle against GOF was difficult for Duradler, I can say that, uh, you know, battle against Fink is going to be very difficult for GOF because Fink, while well, they definitely one of the strong, uh, stronger teams in Thunder League at this point, uh, both in terms of stats, and you know how much I love stats. Stats, they never lie. Uh, and also just generally in terms of the coordination because uh, the way... Think performs tactically, you know, it's just, it's going to be very hard for GOF to, to beat them, even though they're really good uh, on their own terms. But they, you know, if they want to win against uh, Think, I 
Well, I believe they will they will need uh, to play Eastern Europe three times in a row. <laughs> it's, it's like the, yeah, well, well, let's be realistic about this. You know, think better aircraft players, you know, better coordination on the ground. I wouldn't be saying they got better tankers necessarily, but yeah, it's going to be a very hard battle for GOF. And actually, it's going to be very exciting to watch. I just hope they're not going to, you know, uh, collapse the way that Duradler did against GOF. So that's a win for GOF of Ukraine. Now they're moving up the ladder uh, to be facing off against Fink tomorrow. Indeed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have one more match today, which is going to be Poltergeist versus Arcade. Now, this match is going to be at uh, in 20 minutes at 19 30 uh, GMT. So stay tuned for that if you want to win in the giveaways. Don't forget to you have to be logged in on Warfunder Pro and be on the streams tab. You have to be on the streams tab, but you do not have to have the stream running. You can pause it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And you can win some amazing prizes. Now, commentating for your pleasure are myself, Michael's Room, and my amazing comrade here, Sean, also known as Pops RK, also known as the official uh, voice of Warfunder Tutorials, also known as the guy with way too many accolades. Yes, comrade, that's me. Now, okay, next battle is Poltergeist of Russia versus Arcade Esports from the very same country. <laughs> so, and we're gonna we're gonna have a, a little break. So, stay tuned, guys. We're gonna have more giveaways, and uh, it's going to be a very exciting battle. A very exciting battle. Even though I have to say, uh, Duradler and GOF they were more close, more closely matched in terms of points because Poltergeist barely well just barely made it into uh, the playoffs and Duradler as well don't get me wrong but take a look at where arcade esports top five and poltergeist numbers number seven it's going to be hard it's going to be hard but let's hope it's not going to be a massacre at least okay so we're taking a break we're going to be back with you soon stay tuned don't go anywhere Underdog is crushing the top dog. It's just amazing what these guys can pull off. It's going forever. Please look for red tank. Oh, and she takes him out. What a game. What a game. My God. They're attacking their every single vehicle of dislike is falling off. They're assaulting. Welcome back to Thunder League. 